Hello everyone, welcome to our um, Come Follow Me lesson. Um, I will confess that my, in my last lesson I said I was going to prep these lessons beforehand and especially before I went to Snowbird, but I didn't do it last Thursday because I've been lazy. <laughs> but uh, the day I'm doing this is the Saturday, so the day before this is posted, and so th um, thank goodness. <laughs> There's a uh, for the past few lessons we have there wasn't really a closing song listed. They finally listed a closing song. We'll do "Do What Is Right," hymn number two thirty seven. Do what is right, the day dawn is breaking, hailing a future of freedom and light. Angels above us are silently, no, just taking um, of every action. And then do what is right, it keeps popping. Do what is right, let the consequence follow. Battle for freedom in spirit and mind. And with stout hearts, we'll keep forth till tomorrow. God will protect you, then do what is right. I, I, I usually know the song. <laughs> do what is right. The, sh the shakeless are falling, chains of the bonesome no longer are bright. Lightened by hope, soon they'll cease to be gallant. Truth goeth onward, then do what is right. Do what is right, let the consequence follow. Battle for freedom in spirit and mind. And with stout hearts, look ye forth till tomorrow. God will protect you, then do what is right. Do what is right, be faithful and fearless. Onward, press onward, the goal is in sight. Eyes that are wet, now onward long will be tearless. Blessings await you in doing what's right. Do what is right, let the consequence follow. Battle for freedom in spirit and might. And with stout hearts, look ye forth till tomorrow. God will protect you, then do what is right. Well, let's get started. For the Zeremites, prayer was a self-centered self routine practice that happened only once a week. It consists of standing where all could see and repeat, repeat, <laughs> repeating, vain, self-satisfied words, perhaps wars and and uh, Zeremites lacked faith in Jesus Christ, even denied his existence, and persecuted the poor. So, um, kind of like Zorahor from last week, we have some people who don't believe in Christ. So, that's what we're reading in the Book of Mormon. There's also a lot of scriptures here. By contrast, Alma and Amulek boldly taught the prayer hat has more to do with what happens in our hearts than on a public platform and if it doesn't lead to compassion toward those in need it is vain and available nothing so nothing nothing most important it is an expression of faith in 
Jesus Christ, who who offers redemption through his infinite and eternal sacrifice. So Alma chapter 34, verse 28. Whoa, there. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I say to you, do not suppose that this is all for after ye have done all of these, these things, if ye turn away the needy and the net naked and visit not the sick and afflicted and in part of your substance, if ye have to those who stand in need, I say unto you, if ye do not, not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain and availeth. You nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Now, chapter 34, verse 10. You, let's see. Right here. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, ye not a sacrifice of men, man, neither of beasts, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human sacrifice. Christ, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. All right. Such faith, Alma explained, is born of humility and a desire to believe. Alma chapter 32, verse 27. We'll get there. Oh, right here. But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon the words and ex ex exercise a particle of faith, e even if ye can no more than desire to de believe, let the, his desire work in you, even unto ye believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words. So that was chapter 32, 27. It grows gradually like a tree and requires constant nourishment. As you read chapter 32 through 35, you, Alma chapter 32 through 35, you might consider your own faith and players. Do you ever feel any Zeramite like and attitude creeping in how will you nourish your faith in jesus christ so it it will become a tree springing up uh, unto everlasting life so ponder on that question that um alma chapter 32 verse 41 says but it, if ye will nourish the word ye nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow by your faith with great diligence and with patient looking toward to the fruit thereof it shall take root and behold it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life i can choose to be humble here we go alma perceived that the poor zermites were humble and in a pre preparation to hear the word Alma chapter 32, verse C. Uh, where is that verse? Says, and now when Alma heard this, he turned him about his face immediately towards him, and he beheld with great joy, for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them, and that they were in a preparation to hear the word. So that was Alma chapter 32, verse 6. As you read Alma chapter 32, verse 1 through 16, think about how you prepare to hear the word of God. I won't read those verses, but I'll challenge you to read them. What experiences have humbled you? What have you done to become more humble? These verses teach you how to choose hum humility rather than be compelled to be humble. For example, what is the difference between being poor as to things of the world and being poor in heart? Verse 3 says, therefore they were not permitted 
to enter into their synagogues to worship God, being esteemed as filthiness. Therefore, they were poor. E they were esteemed by their brethren as as dross. Therefore, they were poor as to things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. So, so when you're poor in a worldly state, means you don't have a lot of money, you can't afford a house, and things are hard. You're basically homeless almost. There are some people who, who are poor who are not quite homeless, but they can't afford some things. And pure in heart means wicked. So there's kind of a difference in there. What does it mean to humble yourself because of the word? What does it mean to humble yourself because of the word? Verse 14. Seize. And now as I said unto you, that because ye were compelled to be humble, ye were blessed. Do we not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word? Um, so it's talking about um, if you humble yourself, you are blessed. If you don't humble, then you're not blessed. And there are people who humble themselves unto the Lord. I can worship God in prayer anytime and anywhere. Alma and Amulek counseled about worship and prayer was meant to correct specific mis misunderstandings the Zeramites had. Alma chapter 31 verse 13 through 23. Um, but before we read them, I will read the rest of this paragraph. But the truth they taught can help can help any of us of understanding prayer and worship better. Maybe you could make a list of truths about prayer and you find that you find in Alma chapter 33, verse 2 through 11, and Alma chapter 34, verse 17 through 29. So you can look up those verses and make a list of truths in them. So Alma chapter 33, verse 2 through 11, Alma chapter 34, verse 17 through 29. Rewind the video if you want me to repeat those. How will the things you learn from these verses affect the way you pray and worship? So I guess I'll hurry and read all these verses to you. All right, here we go. For they had a place built up in the center of their sigogu, a place for standing which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person. Therefore, whosoever desired to worship must go forth and understand and stand <laughs> upon the top thereof and stretch forth his hands towards heaven and cry with the loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and there that thou was, wast a spirit, and that thou art a spirit, and that thou wilt be a spirit forever. A uh, holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the traditions of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the child, childness of their fathers. But we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. I like that. Um, a lot of scriptures I hear and hear talk about how God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's the same in the past, present, and future. Reflects back to Christmas Carol. <laughs> I was doing something about, about that earlier today. And thou hast elected us that we shall be saved. Whilst all around us are elected to be cast by thy wrath down to hell, for the which holiness, O oh God, God, we thank thee, and we also thank thee that thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief in Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from thee, our God. 
And again, we thank thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. So looks like these people are thanking God for a lot of things. And they have mentioned a few things about how their brethren are wicked and how they don't believe in the traditions of their brethren, but they do believe in God. So that they just ended their prayer just now. But the scripture here tells me to go all the way to 23, so we'll keep reading. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons ha had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Remimption, which being inter inter uh, interpreted is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up every man, uh, which being interrupted in the holy stand. Now from the from this stand they did offer up every man the self same prayer unto God, thanking thanking their God that they were chosen of Him and that He did not lead them away after the traditions of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come, which they knew nothing about. Now, after the people had all offered up thanks after the, this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again until, until they had assembled themselves together again to the Holy Stand to offer up thanks after their manner. So that's it. So that, that was quite a long... Yeah, and I already read the rest of the paragraph. So, again, here's the question. Here's the question you must ponder on: How will you, how will the things you learn from these verses affect the way you pray and worship? So, how will those affect the way you pray and worship? I didn't read all of them. Here are some other ones you can look at too. I'm on chapter 33, verse 2 through 11, and I'm on chapter 34, verse 17 through 29. Oh, and there's also I'm on chapter 31, verse 12 through 23. So you can look at those scriptures. If you want, I'm not going to say them again, but you can rewind the video if you want to. So this life is the time to prepare to meet God. As you read Alma chapter 34, verse 30 through 41, like I said, I'm not reading a whole junk, so I'll leave you to read, to read that. Consider how you might improve your time while in this life. Verse 33, and now as I said unto you, before as ye have had so many witnesses thereof, I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance unto the end. For after this day of life, which he is given us to prepare for eternal etern, uh, eternity, my voice is getting tired. Behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness. Therein, therein, there can be no labor performed. So that's what that says. Um, how can re repentance and patience help you prepare to meet God? So, so like I said, this is this. These are here are some ideas that can in your lifetime that can help you prepare to meet God. Im improve, that is, repent. You know. Repent daily and have and have have patience. So the question says, how can repentance and patience help you prepare to meet God? Ponder on that and answer. Here's another question. Are there changes you need to make that you have been procrastinating? So if, if there are any changes, change them because the second coming may be near. Be sure to act on any spiritual impressions you receive. So act on any spiritual impressions that you receive from this, from this pondering. Chapter 12, verse 24, here's what it says. And we see the death comes upon mankind. And ye the death with which has been spoken of by Amulek, which is the temporal death. Nevertheless, there was a space granted unto man in which he might repent therefore this life became a probationary state a, a time to prepare to meet god 
a time to prepare for that endless state which has been spoken of by us, which is after the resurrection of the dead. So, so yeah, it talks about um, preparing to meet God. So, prepare for that. Um, yeah, so, and there's a talk given by Larry R. Lawrence, What Lack I Yet? You can search that up and read that talk. What would it be like if we were allowed to worship and pray only on Sunday? As you read these verses together, family members could discuss how they can worship every day and why they are thankful that they can. So, so if one thing that I think that could help you guys prepare to meet God is that uh, practice saying your prayers more often. Try worshiping the Lord every day and and thank him for all the things he's given you. Uh, there's a lot of quoted scriptures here, but they're all long except for one of them. And I'll read that one. It's Alma chapter 34, verse 38 and 39. That ye content no more against the Holy Ghost, but that ye receive it and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble your um, yourselves, even the dust, and worship God, in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the manner mercies and blessings which be which he doth bestow upon you. Ye and I also ex exhort you, my brethren, that ye be watchful unto prayer continually, that ye may not be led away by the temptations of the devil, that ye may not overpower you, that ye may not become his subjects at the last day. For behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. So the devil will, will reward you with no good thing. So make sure <laughs> in these last days, don't following the temptations of the devil. So there's a lot of great blessings and warnings in these. And the other verses that, that went along with that, you can look up is chapter Alma, chapter 32, verse 9 through 11. And Alma, chapter 33, verse 2 through 11. Huh. So I'm going to hurry read Alma, chapter 32, verse 9 through 11. Behold, thy brethren hath said that what shall we do? For we are cast out of our synagogues <laughs> that we cannot can worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, do ye suppose that ye cannot worship God? Save it be in your synagogues only. And moreover, I would ask, do ye suppose that ye must not worship God only once in a week? So... Worship God um, every day, not once a week, but yeah. Alma chapter 33, verse 2 through 11, and Alma chapter 34, verse 17 through 29. They're both long, so I challenge you to look them up. It's Alma chapter 33, verse 2 through 11, and Alma chapter 34, verse 17 through 19. And I'm just going to read this question and have you ponder on it as you read those verses. What do these verses suggest about how we can improve our individual and family prayers? So how can you improve your prayers? So does your family know what it means to procrastinate? Maybe someone can share examples of procrastinate and its negative consequences. What does it mean to procrastinate the day of our repentance? So let's read Alma chapter 34, verse 33 through 35. Well, these are long verses. Mom was right. And now, as I say it unto you, before as ye have had so many witnesses, um, I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance unto the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness therein. There can be no labor performed. So if you want your labors to perform, 
you better choose righteously in this life. If you don't repent and stay righteous in this life, a lot of darkness will be coming for you. We cannot say when we are brought to that awful crisis that I will repent, that I will return to my God Nay, ye cannot say this for that same spirit which doth po possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life. That same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. For behold, if... <sighs> For behold, if ye have procrastinated the day of your repentance, even unto death, behold, ye have become subjected to the spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his feet. Therefore, the spirit of the Lord hath um, withdrawn from you, and hath no place in you, and the devil hath all power over you, and this is the final state of the wicked. So that's that's not good. So if we don't choose the right and we and we stumble ourselves away from the Lord, um, there's gonna be bad consequences that follow. So we want to be righteous so we can get those rewards. I am almost done with the lesson. There was a few more scriptures I had in the lesson outline that I wanted to to go over just made us run out of time so i was going to go over a few more things but you know sometimes time flies by sometimes the lessons are too short and i just end it early and if they're too long then i have to cut it so it doesn't go too long because one time when i started doing these lessons i had to cut a 54 minute video and i much prefer a 45 minute one so i like to bear my testimony as we say as we humble ourselves to the lord and we try and we try to be better and we repent and and we we say our prayers and we thank the lord for all the things he's done for us and we pre we prepare the way we prepare ourselves when when it's time to meet him um that we will be blessed and we'll be ready and if we don't fall into the temptations of the devil and we stick to christ we will we won't have to face any darkness and i say these things in the name of jesus christ amen oh there is a closing song at the end we should do huh sorry i'm using a tablet as i said my phone's gone I lost it before Google coming on this vacation. Never had to do that. Even if it's not a hymn from the hymn book, I usually there's usually a voice thing that'll let me turn on the music. But this um, this uh, computer. Faith is knowing the sun will rise, lighting each new day. Faith is knowing the Lord will hear my prayers each each time I pray. Faith is like a little seed. If planted, it will grow. Faith it is a swelling within my heart. When I, I do right, I know. Verse 2. Faith is knowing I lived with God before my mortal birth. Faith is knowing I can return when my life ends on earth. Faith is trusting God above in Christ who showed the way. Faith is strength, and I feel it grow whenever I obey. Um, the second verse, I used a little different music from than the first verse because I couldn't remember what notes I used. We'll have a lot more to cover on Monday now since I didn't get through the rest of today's lesson. But that's okay. We'll have to cover it. We'll cover the rest of it tomorrow. Um, if worse comes to worse, we'll do the last little bit on Wednesday. See you guys on Monday. All right, guys. See you on Monday. Bye.